Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Come on, lift him up. Come on, lift his name. Hallelujah. Come on, give him glory. Come on, give him glory. Come on and give him glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, we magnify you. We glorify you. We give you glory. We give you glory. God, we decree and declare that there's none like you. Haya. In the heaven above, in this earth beneath. We lift you in this place even the more. Not just in this room, God. Not just in our virtual family. But in this place. God, we lay hands on ourselves even now. The Bible says you should lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. We lay hands on ourselves even now. God, everything that is in us that is not like you, everything in this place, we ask you to remove it that you may be lifted high. That you may have first place. That you may heal, deliver, set free, even in this place. Come on, lay hands on yourself. God, give us a sense, God, to understand the time and the season that we're in, that we don't miss you. No longer religion, God, we want full relationship. So we lift you up, God. You say, if you be lifted up from the earth, and we come from the dust of the earth, if you be lifted up from the earth, you would draw all men, draw us closer to you, draw us near to you, God. God, we thank you for this place in you. We give you praise, honor, and glory now. Holy Spirit, you're welcome. You're welcome. Come on, say you're welcome. Come on, y'all be obedient this morning. And invite Holy Spirit to rest and to speak to you. You told her my sheep. Galatians 5 and 1. Let's read it together. Galatians 5 and 1. Let's begin reading the King James Version. It says, Stand therefore, stand fast therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ is not entangled. Be not entangled with what? Again. Everybody say again. again. So it, th this scripture is telling us there's something we're going to be bro broke free from. And we're going to talk about what the scripture is about, but I'm going to bring it to the now of where we are. Because some things we get free from, we get caught up again. Uh -huh. Amen. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is adapted to do the whole law. Christ is become none, of none effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. For we through the spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For if neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which I could really teach on love, but we're going to talk about this freedom today. Amen. Verse number seven. Ye did run well. Who hindered you that ye should not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. I have confidence in you through the Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, I have confidence in you. Through the Lord. That ye will be none otherwise minded. But he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment whosoever he be. So whoever judges you in your freedom going to be bound by their own judgment. Amen. I want to talk about, amen, the cost of freedom. The cost of freedom. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We glory to God. And if you would let me have the next 40 minutes this morning, amen, I really want to get into this because we've been talking uh, this year. We talked about, amen, reverence restored to God, restoring reverence to God. And we said, as we give this reverence that is due to him back unto him, 
really through relationship and not religion. My wife called it real relationship as we continue to honor God the way he should be honored. Amen. Amen. There's, there is an authority that is given to believers. The problem with this authority being restored to us. Amen. A lot of us think, amen, we have to really do a lot to qualify for it. When mainly we all we have to do is be obedient. Tell your neighbor to just be obedient. Amen. If it, if it was our sin that we commit and we all, the Bible says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, none of us would qualify. But it's, it is the attitude of having a heart of repentance that keeps us in a place where we are authorized. Everybody say authorized. Authorized to use the authority that has been given freely to us. And the Bible talks about, amen, I believe it's in, in Ephesians, the second chapter, verse number eight, it says, about, for by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. There are some things, amen, that come through us through salvation. Amen. You say it is the gift of God and, and the things that have been given to us. The Bible says, not of your own. It is the gift of God. And it talks about us being free from some things. And we don't get this on our own. The scripture says, lest any man should boast. But when we read in Galatians here, let me back up a little bit. We talk about uh, Psalm 91 being uh, that secret place, having a, a quiet place in God, a, a, a covering, a refuge, a protected place. No matter what I'm dealing with, if I can find myself back in that place in him, I will find peace. I will find rest in the midst of my troubles. And we talked about, amen, in addition to that, we talked about, amen, setting boundaries. This is what I want you to begin to write, amen, boundaries. We talked about, amen, boundaries in, in, a, in a natural uh, viewpoint. A boundary is something that, that restrains us, that restricts us. And if you define boundary, it is a restriction. It is a thing that you put up, amen, to place limitations. But we say, amen, in the realm of the spirit, amen, boundaries actually provide freedom. They provide freedom because I know, watch this, I know what I'm going to deal with. I know what I've come through. Amen. So I know what I'm going to allow in my space. Y'all better come on here. I know who I've been trying to, to kick it with and I know who, who has uh, taken, amen, and not given back. Y'all talk to me now. You know, some people we want to be good to, they don't be good back. Amen. We still try to make it work. Amen. Situations, places we go and work, we try to make things, the atmosphere right and it don't work for us. And we keep giving our best, but we get nothing in return. And so we find ourselves depleted. We find ourselves trying to pour out of our, our reserve. Amen. Instead of from our overflow. Amen. God told me never preach from your reserve. If I preach and teach from my reserve, this is stuff that I know that I'm easy at doing. I can do it. It's easy for me to do. Amen. But when I preach from my overflow, I preach from revelation. I preach, amen, to restore. I preach to, uh, to, to get uh, breakthroughs and, amen, cause people to be delivered. But when I preach from my reserve, I just preach from familiarity. Come on. And so God is saying to us, amen, when you set boundaries, somebody say, I need to set some boundaries. Amen. When I set boundaries, amen, I, I, I can see, amen, what I'm dealing with. I can see what's coming around me. Amen. I don't have to wait till it's up on me. I don't have to wait till the situation. It's just like when I see smoke, I don't have to wait till I see flames. Because I've set a boundary. There's but so much I'm going to deal with. Amen. Spiritual boundaries can't be seen. Physical boundaries can be seen. So when somebody set a physical boundary. Amen. Uh, what happens is you can see it before you get there. But God said many of us have set boundaries. But we set unhealthy boundaries. In other words we're keeping the wrong people out. We, we are blocking the wrong stuff. Amen. And, and matter of fact, our unhealthy boundaries have has really become restricted areas. Amen. Where we, we have isolated ourselves. Amen. And we've begun to feed ourselves with our hurts. Y'all still with me? We become, we begin to rehearse over and over again what we've gone through. Amen. And instead of being free in Christ, we become bound to our own thoughts. To our own thought process. And because we set boundaries, because we put up restrictions, we are not easily, no one can easily get to us than tell us what we're dealing with because we build up such a fortified boundary that we've actually put ourselves in isolation. 
It's going to cost you to be free because in the cost of freedom, the scripture says, amen, in, in Galatians, Paul is talking to the church and telling them, you got religious rituals and obligations and things that you give into, amen, based upon the law. He said, you made the grace of God of no effect. He said, if you're going to do that, any part of that, you got to do the whole thing. And we know that none of us can do the whole thing, amen, as it pertains to the law. Because if you do something wrong with your eye, your eyes will be plugged out, you steal something, your hand cut off, all this. So we'd be walking around here looking crazy. So he said, look, in, in Christ, if those that are in Christ, he said, stand therefore in the liberty where with Christ has made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Here's another point. I need to be able to identify my yoke. What is my yoke of bondage? Because it's the yoke. When we think of a yoke, Jesus said unto me, the, the scripture said, come unto me, all, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Take my yoke. Jesus says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. So what he's telling us, when you're trying to do this in your own strength, the way will not be easy. In other words, you take on too much pressure on yourself. Amen. Think you have to carry the load. And then while you're carrying the load, there are people that God is trying to yoke you up with. You will block them out because you set boundaries. They have become unhealthy and you'll be blocking the wrong person. So what is my yoke? What is the yoke? He said, be not entangled again. He didn't just call it a yoke. He called it a yoke of bondage. So some of us have been crippled, amen, by things through familiarity, by our past. Y'all talk to me. And God is trying to bring us into a newness in him, trying to what we call elevate us. We talk about elevation or we talk about promotion. And God said, I'm trying to promote you, but it's your, this, this freedom, amen, that I'm giving you is going to cost you something. Yes. Tell your neighbor, say, freedom going to cost you. Yes. Amen. We're talking about the cost of freedom. Uh, our subtopic about is freedom in Christ. Staying free in Christ. If I'm going to stay free in him, it's going to cost me something. Yes, sir. Come on. Come on. Salvation is free. And we talk about gifts and calling. You know, we say gifts are given, fruit is developed. Salvation is free, but guess what? It's going to cost you something. To stay free. Tell your neighbor, say to stay free. It says it's going to cost you something. First of all, amen. Amen. What, we got to figure out what our yoke is. What is the thing that got us bound? Because if I don't identify what God what has me bound, amen, it will become familiar or common to me and I become common with carrying a load that I shouldn't carry. Y'all don't miss this, man. Some of us carry stuff that we don't need to carry. Some of us carry opinions we don't need to carry. <laughs> We're carrying external pressures, amen, that's infecting us, affecting us internally that we don't need to carry. We're too busy worrying about what people think about us rather than what God thinks about us. Come on. So we're trying our press to impress people. We're trying our best to build that right relationship to get that right connection. Or the one that feels right. Rather than securing our connection in him. I know you say, I know you love the Lord. Amen. But you, your struggles keep you away from him. Your past hurts keep you from giving your all. Come on, y'all. Some stuff we're going through, you say, I never go through this again. And you see something similar to God bring you through a place of deliverance and you see something similar like you what you went through and you'll pull back because, amen, you're afraid to go to that next place. You're afraid of the new. So we'll tell you, write your name, write your name, say, I need to identify my yoke. Now, 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 uh, some of us have multiple yokes. Because the issue is, because number one, we, we want to be liked. We want to be liked. We want to fit in. In Christ, amen, you're not going to always fit in. Sometimes, watch this, watch this. Sometimes to God, for God to get you to the place he needs you to be, he has to strip all securities out of your life. He had to strip all insecurities to you. Because what we have found to be a security, it really has become our source. 
instead of him being our source, amen, our securities have become our source. And he say, amen, if, I, if you keep on depending on your security, amen, I got to strip you down so you can come back to me because you become entangled with the yoke of your security. Some of us is in some bad entanglements. We use entanglement as no relationship, funny, crazy relationships. But some of us have some entanglements with the world, amen, with the, with the world system, amen, that we no longer trust God, amen. In, in order for us to get the fullness out of our relationship with him, we got to let go of some worldly stuff. I was listening to that, the song by Maverick City, I Wait On You. And that song had us crying. You know, I trust in your word. And then we sent all this. And, and we, we began to go through some of the vamp in the song. And some of the things we had to endure in this past season. We only were able to do it because we chose to wait on him. And then we said not only wait on him. But we waited in him. Some of us waiting on him. But we're not waiting in him. We waiting on God to move. But we're standing outside the purpose and the plan of God. So not only do I have to wait on him, I have to wait in him. Let me get back to this. So if Paul is telling people, say, if you do all this religious stuff, but you mess up over here, it messes everything up. I ain't cussing, but I'm mean. I ain't drinking, but I smoke. Come on. Come on. I'm not a tailbearer, but I love to listen to gossip. Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupt good manners. So the thing I judge you on, I got some stuff I need to be judged on myself. So, so I got to find, I got to find a grace, a place in him where I'm able to be Amen. Stand before people in my imperfections because I'm not just free in the church. I'm free in him. Somebody say I'm free in him. You can look at anybody in this church and get all kind of faults you can find with them. The physical, spiritual. Some stuff we can look at folks, you know. Some of y'all just like to aggravate to see some of your responses, see how saved you really are, you know. And sometimes I'd be pushing buttons and things that don't need to be pushed, but it's, thank you, Lord. It's not nice, she said. It's not nice. And, and my wife tell me that. She said, baby, you just do too much. So I asked God to check me because it's, it's just a, a thing I like to do. You know, that's Jamie, know what I'm saying. It's just stuff I like to do. But sometimes you be pushing the wrong buttons because it's good for you. It might not be good for the person you. And somebody have set a boundary that I'm not going to deal with apostle today. You know, then I'm thinking you acting funny and we go two weeks and don't speak because I got in your space. I know that's a small thing, amen, but there's some big things that we deal with that, that we need to confront because it's costing us our freedom. Paul began to talk to these Galatians and then he said, you were doing well. Then he get down to verse 7 or 7 and, and, and New Living Translation said, you were running the race so well. You were doing good. When you weren't trying to impress nobody. When you let them see you broken down. When they, when you, see, you, it's not a problem for people to see us in our high place. But when you're going through. Then when you're on the mountain looking good. And people, and people applauding you and celebrating you. Why can't you be that same person when you're down? Why can't you have that same mentality? Come on. He said, you did run well, but who hindered you that you stopped following the truth? You stopped following the word. What's held you back? What's made you think you're not the same person in your high place that you, you are the same person in your low place? If you're anointed, you're anointed when you're going through. You're anointed with the crowd. Come on, somebody. You're anointed when there ain't nobody around you. Amen. You're anointed when your pocket's fat. You're anointed when your pocket's empty. Come on, somebody. Say, I told him I'm anointed when my gas tank is full when it ain't full. I'm stealing. 
So Paul made up his mind. Thank you, sweetie. It's like she in my head. And Paul made up his mind and said, I'm going to stay free. Somebody said, I'm going to stay free this year. Amen. There's some things God has brought me through, but I know in my, in, within me there's still some stuff I got to get out of me. Somebody said, I still got some stuff to get out. See, a lot of us, we've been, we've, been, we've been celebrating and praising God and running and celebrating this church. And, and we're talking about the conference and the, the women's revival. I'm not waiting till the revival come to get free. Amen. It, by the time we get to the revival, amen, if there's any residue left, that's coming out too. Somebody say everything coming out. It's, it's just like being free is just like going to the gym. We, you know, I love the gym, y'all. If I work out. Good in January. I'm consistent. Four days a week, have a rest day, you know, eat all right and do my little cheat on the weekend. If I do it all January and February and then March, I don't do anything. I'm going to lose those gains. And when I start over, tell them when you start over, want a baby. My wife had been out of, the, out of the gym for three months. And man, we was in the gym the other day. She was on that Peloton. She was killing it. She had her headphones in because she didn't want to interrupt my music. And then she said, whew. By that second, whoo, Jesus is saying, I'm sorry, Jesus. <laughs> we, she can't hear us, but we can hear her. I said, that thing kicking her butt over there. But she finished. And then she, when she finished, we always take a picture of her progress. And although she's been away three months, her progress hasn't dropped off that much. But the after effects of pushing that hard like you've been going the whole. See, you can still push that hard, but it's going to cost you something. So she got off the Peloton and she's I already told her what we're going to do. I said, once you get through with this, we're going to do a little ab work. We're going to do this. And so she sat down. She took a picture. And, you know, you look on Facebook. Laura standing behind her in a picture like this, like she did Peloton, but she didn't. She didn't do it. <laughs> oh, that's a secret. She did something, but she didn't do that. Amen. But anyway, she sat on the bench and she was breathing. I said, now, nah. I'm sitting myself. I know she don't think she's getting out of this ab work and this other stuff. And she got up and stretched. And then she said, now what else you need me to do? So I gave her what to do. When she started doing it, the first set was like a struggle. But the second and third set, you can see the change. Because she was counting up the cost. Which of you first Willing to build a building, a building, a tower, building anything to sit not down first and count up the cost. What is it going to cost me to stay in this place of freedom? When you really get free, husband might be mad sometimes. Wife might be mad sometimes. Not that I'm aggravating her. Well, she's aggravating me, but there's just some places I'm not going in this season because I'm free for me. I got to be free for my whole family, but first I got to be free within myself. If I don't get free in him, I'm never going to be free in him. So freedom starts in my relationship with him. Number one. I got to go to God, amen, naked and unashamed. Yeah, yeah. I got to tell him all my truths. All my truth. Even the stuff I ain't told nobody about. Yeah, yeah. Somebody say the whole truth the whole and nothing but the truth. truth. So you can help me, God. Then I can be free. Yeah. See, we go, we go and tell God the stuff that people can see. Oh, okay. I'm telling him everything. I tell, I tell you, I said something y'all what I'm dealing with so y'all don't come up me in the wrong way. Because I want you to, man, pastor swung on it. I told y'all I still got issues. Come on. Why are you looking at me like that? You know? <laughs> and, and people don't want to be real. Man, you, you are a leader. Yes. I am a man of God. I am not God. You could talk about me, but you better not say nothing about my wife. You're going to meet me outside. In that order. Come on, somebody. She'd be like, babe, it's okay. No, it ain't okay. You sit, I'll tell you, you go sit down. I got this. It ain't even that serious, girl. 
they won't say it again. They'll think twice before they say it again. What you going to do now? I hope the Lord don't come back while I'm doing it. But I'm free. I'm, I'm, I'm free in that regard. Now, I don't want to be placed in that position. So if I see somebody that's going to come at us and say, wait, I'm going to separate myself. I'm going to put a boundary. How you doing, sir? Just, just like that. Don't come over here. They got people hand. There's some people in your life who hand you shake. There's some people you give a hug. Some hands you shake. Some give you, how you doing? Watch this. Did that some you do like this? They might be all right, you know. But then the others just nod at like you, you still over there. How you doing? You still over there. So watch and see which one you get when you get a money. How you doing, Pastor? We cool still. How you doing, Pastor? You, you still over there? That down mean down. We still good? No, we not. Okay. Amen. Stay free. The thing I'm trying to get us to, I had to put a little comedy because y'all being hard on yourself. A lot of us looking at what we're dealing with now and how much stuff we're taking from people that we didn't really have to take. Jesus. What's my yoke? The yoke, amen, a yoke is a thing that binds two things together. So with the yoke in place, you can't go separate ways. Your yoke can be an internal struggle. And although you're trying to go the right way, your yoke is pulling you. Hey, deal with the yoke, sir. Your yoke can be some stuff that you dealt with. At, I, I'm tired of, y'all don't, forgive me for saying, I'm tired of 40, 50 year old people telling me what happened to them when they was a child. Jesus. You need counseling. You need to get delivered. My mama beat me too. She beat all of us, but we ain't crazy. It made us good. It didn't kill us. It made us better. Come on. Taught me how to treat a woman. Come on. Stuff happened to me as a child. It messed me up. It made me aware. It made me aware when I see other people. Around, oh, okay, don't, don't, don't do this. We got to get, get free so we can be free. Right there now, I got to get free so I can be free. If we don't get free, if I start doing religious stuff, Throwing out subliminal messages trying to fool people. And my, I, my own struggle is internal. My struggle is with myself. Because I want people to see me a certain way. Let me tell you when you really get free. When you can look at your own life. And pat yourself on the back. <laughs> Not because you're arrogant or cocky. But I made, I made some wise decisions in my life. When I look at my life and say, every, watch, you can ask her, she ain't going to let me lie. Everything I promised my wife when, we were tw- when I was 25 and she was 24, we got married. I said, if you stick with me, there's going to come a time in your life you're going to want for anything. And if you want it, you'll be able to go and get it. Come on. Now, she ain't trying to tell me we're going to go buy a whole island because she knows that ain't where we at. Come on, it would be nice. I'm we're gonna get there some type of way. I just believe big. I believe I ask big, I believe big, big, you know. I give big, I think big. And she told me that too, because we were retired. She wrote about tithes before we retired. I look over there. I said, Where that where'd that check for? That's our tithe. I said, We weren't making that much in the army. I'm believing God for increase. I said, We ain't right, you ain't cashing that check today. Boy, quit playing. Sign the thing I was sending for. I got an agreement. God increases. I was bound to my source or my resource. I was bound to that Sergeant First Class, 19 years in the Army. I was bound to that check. That was some good money. <laughs> that was some good, easy money every month, whether I go or not. Like clockwork for 20 plus years. And then I came out on a promotion list and the Lord told me uh, to, it was time to come out and I came out on a promotion list. We were already in the church for three years and they said they send you to Korea. Well, I said, no, they ain't. They said, you get in, you go to Korea, you get out. 
I already knew what I was doing. The Lord had already spoke to me. But my struggle, my bondage was the security of that pay every first and 15. That was easy money. And you married to an entrepreneur? Man, we were loaded. We were just, I said, I was looking at all of that, man. And God said, is that your source or am I your source? Guess what I told God? I said, we need this because we ain't got no members. And I got to pay the tithes. I got to pay the rent for the, come on, I said, we got to pay the rent. We had no members. We had some joined in the house, but they lived in Montgomery. The sellers and the hinds. They lived in Montgomery. And then we had one family never step foot in the church, partner with us for the first six years, didn't they, baby? Their ties. Y'all better catch this. When you get free, God told me to retire, drop your papers, retire, and I'm worried about it. God said, when you trust me, you don't have no worry. Take no thought for your life. Matthew 6, come on. Take no thought for tomorrow. When I stopped taking thought, I said, I told the spiritual son and daughter in Alaska, I said, look, we get ready to do this. They said, we're going to tithe into the, in, the ministry until we find a church. For six years. Their tithe covered our mortgage, our rent. And they had never been here. They came here twice in six years. And then when they found a church, that's when they said, we're going to tithe up until this time, until we commit to this church. We just want you all to know. But we was rolling then. We were crying, they were crying, because they said, this, what y'all, they said, what y'all want us to do? We're going to join this church. We said, your tithe goes to the church that you're assigned to. Wherever you eat it. So what are y'all going to do? God already got us. Because we were free. Amen. The cost of freedom. Freedom, watch this, here go three things, and we got, we got a few minutes. The freedom is going to cost you, amen, relationships. Why? Why? Because relationships are things, amen, that give you, uh, un, uh, give, put expectations on you. And when you stop meeting the expectation of man, they lose that, they, they kind of lose that how they look at you. They, they, they don't honor you the way they used to. Wow. When you normally say yes, even when you didn't feel like a yes, but you just said yes because you didn't want to mess with that friendship. Somebody say no is a good thing sometimes. No means no. Are you sure? No means no. Freedom will cost you connections. Because some of our friendships and our connections become unhealthy. And they cause us to begin to compromise who we really are in him. So we'll find ourselves doing things to maintain these connections, these friendships, these relationships. And we'll find ourselves doing things that we would not normally do. Watch this. We start lowering ourselves to make others feel comfortable. Come on. We start, we start taking second seat when God put us in the first seat. Freedom won't cost you something. Freedom won't cost you. Here's a question. What's interrupting my freedom? I'll give you two questions. Number one, what's my yoke? Number two, what's interrupting my freedom? Who am I trying to impress? Okay, Pastor, I ain't trying to impress nobody. Okay, who are you afraid to make mad at you? That's a better question. Because we're afraid to make people mad because we don't want to lose friendship. Y'all know one thing I tell everybody that joined this church? Don't join because y'all like us. Because I promise you, at some point or another, not intentionally, I'm going to say something that you don't particularly agree with. And as if I think it's right, I'm not going to take it back. That's a possible to say, before I take it back, I add more to it. Because it's for your soul. Are y'all still with me? Jesus said in John, the 8th chapter, verse 31, Jesus said unto them Jews which believed on him, if you continue my word, then ye should be my disciples indeed. If you continue in my word. The word is the truth. It's the thing that should guide us. Amen. Into our freedom. If it does not line up with the word. And I follow it. It may feel good for the moment. But after a while it's going to put me in bondage. 
Be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Here's something for you all. Some of you have come through some things with these things that cost you your freedom. Friendships, relationships, family relationships, amen, connections that, that God broke you free from. God separated you from some things, some people. Some, some folks showed you who they really were. Come on, they disconnect themselves from you or they stay with you, but they don't treat you the same because they got somebody else they can dog out. But now you're back standing strong. They want to reconnect themselves. You got to tell people not, not in this season. I keep telling you about your table. You need enemies. You need bad situations because the scripture says, well, he prepared a table before me. In the what? In the presence of my enemies. So I need my enemies there to see me. To see me be free. And they can be in the room, but they can't sit at my table. Because if they get at the table, they might put some pressure on me. Or might mess up what's el what else is at my table. Or they might interfere. Catch this. They might interfere with what is being served to me. In this, in this new place. In this place of freedom. Come on somebody. In this secret place that I'm in now. Because my relationship with God. Makes it seem like I don't care. Because it costs me. When you really get free. It, it seems like you don't care anymore. But here's another one. I care. But I care more about me now. I'm not selfish. It, it is the Jesus in me that calls me to care about what he puts in me. So I won't be religious. Not just following rituals. Send that for the liberty where Christ has made you free. I'm not going to be religious all again. You know, because, you know, church folks, we think we're supposed to help everybody do everything. You know, I was telling my wife, how many of y'all remember the guy that's been here for a while? And it's probably going to happen around women's conference. Y'all get ready for a parking lot. The guy always show up, need some money to help stay in the hotel. I'm going to go ahead and bust him out before he come. I hope he watch this. <laughs> he be staying at the Motel 6 down on Veterans Parkway. He come every other year. And then he say, look, I'm coming back, Rev. I'm going to come to church Sunday. He said, you know what? If y'all don't believe me, I'll give y'all my ID card. I said, man, that's your extra ID card. How many you got? I told him last time, we're not giving you anything. So y'all just going to let me be on the street. I said, no, we're going to let you be on the street. He said, they're with the church. Well, I said, not this church. Then this joker had the audacity to say, I ain't never coming back here. I said, you don't come anyway. <laughs> this dude got ready to walk off. He said, Pastor, I like you, man. You, you real. I like, dude, if you get anything from here, you're going to be here to get it. We still bought him something to eat, but we didn't give him no money to stay in the hotel. Because he come every year. Now he don't show up again. He, he real healthy to be homeless. <laughs> come on, he about 6'3", about 240, you know. He gonna show up again. He gonna offer his ID card. For those that be in the parking lot, y'all hold my ID till I come back. Somebody say, not again. You can't let people put you in a place. I said this last week. You can't let people put you in a place where they don't, they don't have the capacity to keep you. You can't let your love for people put an obligation on you where they're not willing to return that love. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Because you can want more for somebody and they don't want it for themselves. Because everybody else is wrong. You're trying to make them be like you. I'm trying to get you free. You don't care? Yeah, I care. I care just as much as you do. You're not going to help if you help yourself. When you get people to this point, and then you stop letting people put an undue expectations on you, you'll stay free. 
the undue expectation. You don't have it, they don't have anything due to them. What are they expecting from you? They haven't, bought, they haven't bought anything to the table. If you should know the truth, the truth should make you free. Somebody say, I need the word in my life. Then in verse 36, and we come to a close. I know y'all, some of y'all ain't getting nothing out of this, but we. Verse 36 say, if the son, therefore, should make you free. If the son, John 8 and 36, say, if the son, therefore, shall make you free. You shall be free indeed. Can we put these two together before we close this up? Galatians 5 and 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty where with Christ hath made us free, and Christ is the Son. Then over in John 8 and 36, say, if the Son shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. So through salvation, I'm free. Amen. Staying free, it comes when I meet the demands the, the of the word on my life. Not that I'm perfect before people. Are y'all still here? Amen. If he shall make me free, I shall be free indeed. Liberty. Liberty. <laughs> Liberty. Liberty. Freedom from external Pressures, freedom from foreign rule. Everybody say foreign. foreign. I mean, that means like we know naturally from another country, but there's stuff that's outside the body of Christ, that's outside your relationship with Christ. Somebody said that's foreign to me. Somebody ever came to you with something, you're like, man, I don't even know what you're talking about. You remember so and so? Oh, you know, that's foreign to me. Freedom from external, freedom from interference, obligation. Liberty is the power or right of doing. I have a right to do what I've been ordained to do. My thinking is in accordance with the word. And liberty is based according to choice. I have a choice to keep myself free. Now this ain't no good church talk, but when you start acting, really get free in Christ, religious folk don't like you. Oh my, that part right there. Come on. Church folks don't like you when you get free for real. Come on. Come on. They don't even do it. I, I know this is going to mess with everybody in the room here because y'all saved, sanctified, filled the Holy Ghost and a mighty burning fire. How many times, amen, how many times, for real, it, that, that some, somebody said something to you in one of them old words that was boiling up in your spirit? You know, you know how we... I was a cussologist when I was growing up. I could give you a whole paragraph. Nothing but cuss words. We talk like that in our house. You know, it was common where I grew up. And every now and then, that spirit tried to creep back in. And, and I hear it before I hear it. Y'all hear what I'm saying? You hear it before you hear it. God loves me enough to let me hear it before it comes out. And, and a natural or ungodly freedom would say, well, I can say it. And then I repent or I won't feel bad about it because I just, just how I feel. But if I'm free in Christ, I ain't going to let it go. And it's, if it just so happened to get out, I'm going to repent quickly. Watch this. I'm not going to let you say, ooh, he's supposed to be saying, that ain't going to convict me. Your, come on. Y'all need to tell somebody, your expectation of me won't convict me. It's, it's the expectation that I have in myself. The demand that I put on myself to stay free, that's what's going to convict me. So you can judge me where I am. But you don't know where I'm trying to get to. You might not see my progress. Come on, somebody. But I know that I'm growing daily. Y'all better come on here. See, people are judging for where they see you at, but they don't know what you're trying to get to. They don't see your preparation time. Come on. They don't know what you do to get where you are. Why you let them talk to you like that? Man, I remember back in the day. I ain't back in the day. So you can't let people put no pressure on you. Tell you that, write yourself a note. I don't feel pressure. I don't feel pressure. Mm -mm. Well, you supposed to do this. Well, what, don't worry about you. 
<laughs> Somebody told me, you, and you supposed to be an apostle? Well, however you see me, you can call me brother. I'm a husband first. A father and a grandfather. All the other stuff follow after that. If, if God set me down and said, what do you, what do you want to be? It wouldn't be right here. I find it, I find it easier just being a husband. Even when I don't get along with my wife. I had to tell somebody the other day, I said, I love you, but I don't like you. Why? I got to stay free. Y'all got folks in your life that you love, but you don't like? If you don't tell them, they'll keep coming at you the same way. What you mean you don't like me? I love you. I agape you. I feel on you. But I don't like you. Come on. Why you don't like me? Then we can have a conversation. I agape you because I got to. So I got to put up with you. But the other love is kind of, it's kind of struggle. So because I, I really don't like you. Why don't you like me? This, this, and this. Let's have a conversation. Because we can have this conversation, we can fix some stuff. Now, some people you have those conversations with, they're not going to see it. Because every man think he's right. Well, y'all know that scripture. The thing, that, the thing that gets me the most, and I'm closing, when I try to spark up a little heated discussion, with Valencia Hines over there. And she'd be like, okay. I'm like, you understand what I'm saying? She said, I hear you. I said, are you listening? You know, because I try to get deep. You hear me, but are you listening? And she's like, bae. Well, she just leave it at bae. I do, just be quiet. This is, my, this is what tell me, man, just be quiet. You, this ain't going nowhere. You have to revisit this because somewhere you got off track or y'all not on the same line right now. So it only using digging. But you know me, persistent. <laughs> Some of the wives into my God, Jesus. That must be a man thing. Then don't know when to be quiet. I think it's women like that too, though. <laughs> Got to have the last word. Amen. It costs you something to stay free. In closing, in closing, here's, here's a thought I want you to keep in your mind. Paul asked the Galatians, you were running this race so well. Hope you were doing so good. What hindered you? What stopped you from pursuing me? Jennifer, you were doing so well. What knocked you off track? What is the yoke? snatched you got you back to what you say you wouldn't be doing again cause just because you walking in a victory today we get to shouting and celebrate the devil's like okay I'll see you in a couple days because he know if you really get free and your, your whole family is tied to you he know if you can stay in a place of celebration your whole family is going to be celebrating soon. So he'll let you celebrate right now. But then he, he's devising a plan. I'm going to get you with the same yoke. But I'm coming a different way. How are you going to come with the same thing? Lay aside every weight. And what? The thing. There's a the thing that will get you. And he knows it. He just dresses it up differently. Come on. I'm going to stop. I heard this preacher say, you know, he was talking about, uh, he was talking about women in the church. He said, my women of the night becoming women of the church. And he said, some of them don't be transformed yet. They just dress different. But their motives is the same. Then he started talking about the preacher. He said, some of them were pimps. He said, some of them still pimps. They just dress different. He said, their motives are the same. He said, if you're not able to identify or recognize the characteristics of these You'll be caught by the way it presents itself and not be able to identify the spirit. And when you're free in Christ, there's some stuff that used to get you that won't get you no more. And let me, this is my confession. Come on, baby, come on, get ready, come on. My confession is this. 
There's some stuff, you know, I've been in ministry almost 30 years. Trying to be a good preacher, you know, being right with the Lord and do what's right in the eyes of God. And I'm sure Prophet Hallman and a few of y'all can relate to this. Pastor Tucker has been out here for a while preaching the gospel. There's some stuff that used to, it can get you quite often because you want to be good to folk. Come on. A different person come around, they had the same issue somebody else had, but you think this person, surely this person ain't going to do this. Yeah. It's not the people, it's the spirit. God told me it's the spirit. If we start identifying the spirits that we see in people, we'll suffer less. Some folk get punished not because of who they are, but because of the spirit that's on them. Guess what I said? Some people you're going to have to sit to the side, not because of who they are. Don't deal with people because you like them. Deal with them based upon that spirit that they come in. Because you don't, you find yourself entangled again. You get, you get hit, wounded in the same place. Anybody got some surgery scars? And you, you touch them, they, they, they heal fully, but you, you touch them, they still like they still hurt sometimes. You got to tell me if it's cold outside. When I get up and that knee get to popping and crying, I say, man, it must be cold. Oh, it's raining. I jumped out the truck the other day, man, and thought I was going to run over to the ladies. they like, man, what are you doing? You got to warm up to this. This is being real with yourself. We're standing. We're standing. Come on up, sweetie. Just close your eyes for a moment. Glory to God. Give me something to soften. Thank you, Jesus. Even online. Say this with me. Say, Father, Father help, me help me to identify, to identify those, things those things that keep me in bondage. Me in bondage. Every, relationship, every relationship, every connection, every, connection, every, association, every association, everything, everything that, is a that is a hindrance to my freedom, to my freedom. Help, me help me to identify. To identify. Say, Father, I take a, I make a decision of quality. I make a decision of quality that as you expose these things, that as you expose these things, I will set, I will set healthy boundaries. Healthy boundaries. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I decree and declare. I decree and declare a mind to set healthy boundaries. In Jesus' name. I prepare myself for what shall be revealed. And what shall be revealed. And take appropriate action. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Give God a hand praise. Hallelujah.